Hi, everyone. Happy Thursday on this really hot, expected day. <laughs> um, uh, we're trying to do lives every week or so. And um, today, as our guest, we have Shirley Gutowski from Primal Air on Main Street, Sun Prairie. And we're going to learn a little bit about uh, what she does, because every day I learn something new from her. <laughs> um, so... As you all know, we see a lot of families and babies and pregnant mamas and uh, with kids, especially I've uh, started for a few months now starting looking for their looking inside their airway. So checking if they actually have space in the back of their throat so that they're actually able to breathe with their mouth closed. I know we don't think about breathing in that aspect, but after knowing um, and getting to know Shirley, um, I've had my daughters evaluated and also have sent people to her as well uh, because they don't have enough airway support. Therefore, when they're sleeping, their mouth is open and that just opens big, a big jar of worms, really. Um, and she helps people to breathe better. So we're going to learn a little bit about that today. Shirley, you want to uh, tell us what you do and specifically why it's important to have kids evaluated? Well, that's a, a big question. So um, when I was a young mother, I had no idea that kids were supposed to have their mouth closed. It never, never entered into any thoughts whatsoever. Even as a new grandmother, I didn't know how important that was. I knew from movies that a lot of times grandmas would say, close your mouth, chew with your mouth closed. And, and that was a conversation that was in these movies. And I always thought, well, that's weird. And uh, I think now nobody thinks about it at all because everybody is so busy they are, especially these last two years with lockdowns and masks and kids are sick like crazy. I cannot believe how sick kids are all of a sudden. And uh, when you come home from work and you pick up your child, you have two and three hours before bedtime and that's it. And that's the last thing you're even thinking about is close your mouth, close your mouth, close your mouth because you have to take them to baseball or you have to do their homework with them or you just have to get them to eat, period. Um, and then they have meltdowns because they're tired and overstimulated and yada, right. yada. This is the last thing. So the other thing that's happening is in the olden days, babies slept in a separate, they slept in your room for a while and then you were happy to hear them snoring because then you know they were alive. <laughs> because <laughs> if they didn't make noise, it was always like pins and needles. Right. And uh, so today we at least have baby monitors, but you really, you know, sometimes you turn the volume off or it doesn't come with volume or whatever. And so we don't have a good, um, a good idea about what breathing even is in children. So here are the, here's the short the shortest list ever. Quiet. That's it. No sound whatsoever. That's it. And if their mouth is open, that's not a good sign. But if there's no noise, that's not horrible. So we want them to have their lips together. But if you right now open your mouth and put your tongue against the roof of your mouth, you can't breathe with your mouth open. So if their tongue is up, I'm not that twisted about it, but if they are chewing with their mouth open, if they're breathing all day with their mouth open and they're snoring or making breathing noises while they're sleeping, those are all big red flags. What are they red flags for? ADHD, stomach aches, vomiting, um, GERD, uh, just regular, just, just burping up stomach gases and, and acids. Um, and this part of the brain doesn't develop because the oxygenation is incorrect. The balance of oxygen, carbon dioxide and nitric oxide, those are the three breathing gases from the nose are not optimized. So that's why we have a lot of problems. So what do we do? 
we work with the muscles in the snoring complex. So the nose, the mouth, the lips, the tongue, the back of the throat, all of those muscles need to be optimized and harmonized in order to keep the, the airway open in order to keep the breathing down or, mm -hmm. or keep the breathing, breathing hole big enough. If you're, if you're mouth breathing, the tonsils will explode. They'll just, grrr, they'll just grow till they're almost touching one another and that's cutting off the airway too. So now you really have to breathe with the mouth open and mouth open breathing also will lead to jaw joint problems. How many people do you guys see in your office right now, Shalom, that have jaw joint problems? Probably 50%. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. And that comes from uh, while you're developing because it can't develop that perfect jaw joint um, inner inner bony react or what do I want to say how the bones come together with that mm -hmm. little capsule and all those ligaments have right. to grow the exact right length none of that can happen if the mouth is hanging open so mm -hmm. that's that's what we do is that, and, is that uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it covers it a lot and I've also noticed like just they say they don't have any issues with their jaw but then you, you palpate like your um, temporalis muscle, their temporalis muscle or the cranial bones in there. And then they'll know, then they're like, oh, those are all so sore, you know? So I know those. there's something happening. <laughs> I know there's something happening during their night or sleep or something in that complex is not working in the right way because these muscles that are supposed to be relaxed are super you know, tight and they actually right. feel it. And this week, especially, I don't know, because I put it out there or something, every single person has, you know, you could feel the fibers knotted up in that temporalis muscle. And so I have to, you know, spend a few more minutes working on that. They, they feel the pain while I'm working on it. But a day later, when I check on them, they feel the relief. They say it's better and then that it's not sore. Then again, I also have to ask them, you know, do you sleep? How do you sleep well? And is your mouth open when you wake up and all these things? So, um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about um, tongue ties and how that has an effect. So the tongue tie is a very interesting little, let's call it malady. So this is a feature of, um, uh, misfire during fetal development. So this is where this, uh, 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 I have mm -hmm. under the tongue, there's supposed to be a little tissue that holds your tongue to the floor of your, of your mouth, mm -hmm. but it's not supposed to interfere with the tongue's ability to reach all the way to the palate. Mm -hmm. So right now, if you're, if all of our listeners think about the whole licking part of their palate or licking part of their tongue up against the roof of their mouth. And then put your teeth together. How hard is that to hold that up there? It's kind of tiring for most people. And mm -hmm. some people, when they do that, they'll get a lot of pain back in here in back their in, neck. Okay. Yeah, and then it'll, sometimes it'll be across here too. So it's really important that that tissue either be stretched through a lot of manipulations. We don't do that. Um, we teach you to get your tongue up there and figure out what we can do to get that stretched. Mm -hmm. So that tissue is attached to the fascia that goes through every single muscle in your whole body from here to your toes. So mm -hmm. sometimes just having a myofascial release is appropriate. More often, it's best to just have a small little procedure called a tongue tie release or a lip tie release so that the tongue can get up onto the roof of the mouth. When we look at x-rays of people who have very small airways, it's because the tongue is not against the roof of the mouth and it's slumped back into the airway. 
So if you just imagine now just putting only the tip of your tongue against the roof of your mouth the way you had it a second ago. And where's the volume of that tongue going? It's going to close off this tube, this breathing mm -hmm. tube. So we do, we do a lot of work with, uh, we have patients do a lot of work with their muscles and um, making sounds and doing exercises with their tongue. Uh -huh. I had one, push it into your cheeks and um, using proprioception. I love that mm -hmm. word. <laughs> uh, so that's my super fancy word of the day. And uh, holding little pieces of uh, little tiny rubber bands up against the roof of the mouth. We, um, with kids, we try to do things that are a lot more active, like doing jumping jacks while their mouth is closed and their tongue is up. And um, that helps to build this, this whole complex here. The lips need to know that there's a partner. So when you, Shalom, are seeing your infant patients, mothers should be doing this to their babies mm. all the time when they're sleeping. So when uh, I went to visit our latest little grandson, I tried to, tried to do that. I mean, he, most of the time his mouth was closed. But this didn't work as good as this. Uh -huh. And if his lips were closed, I couldn't open them. I was mm. doing that, that, and it was tight. And there was <laughs> a fight to get those lips apart. So the lips need to know that there is a, that there's a partner, that mm -hmm. they have to close that whole system down so that breathing goes in through the nose. The other thing I want to quickly say is that the nose is a use it or lose it organ. If you breathe through your mouth from the time you're a tiny baby until you're a grown up, your sinuses don't grow to grown up size. Mm -hmm. Who knows where they're going to stop? What if they stopped at an eight year old size? What if they stopped right. at a 12 year old size? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? How are you going to do your couch to 5k <laughs> if you can't, if you can't breathe properly through your nose? It's a, it's a big problem that we are identifying. Um, the science is identifying it and the chiropractors are very involved in trying to get these, these pieces to work properly. Nothing else is going to work if you can't breathe right. Yeah. And no matter, and I found that no matter how much I adjust, because their <clears throat> internal capacity of getting oxygen is not at the optimal level, they go right back out. They're not able to hold it. But once they get that breathing right, their vagus nerve is working. Um, they get their actual, they're not breathing through their shoulders or breathing through their mouth. Then you're able to actually get to that optimal level of healing. You know, no matter what I do with adjustment, they also have to work a little bit. That's what I tell them anyway, <laughs> to make sure that they keep their mouth closed. And the importance of having little kids checked is a big deal because we are seeing the adult repercussion of not having this checked when they were a child, right? Like, let's say, I mean, there's many um, ways to feed a child, but breastfeeding seems to be the, you know, from the get-go, well, the optimal yeah. level so that it puts them up for a better future. And sometimes that doesn't happen, but then there are other ways to accommodate for that. Um, and it's important to look at kids first because we want to avoid having them have the um, CPAP machine when they're older. And once I see, once you're hooked on it, you're hooked on it for life. And that's what they uh, say. Yeah. Yeah. And then ADHD and then anxiety and depression and um, so many other issues that come up with that all always having that uh, nasal congestion, sinuses getting in, inflamed, TMJ issues, grinding their teeth, like it just goes yeah. on and on and on. It just continues to go on. And uh, with ear infections too, when their spine, like we talk a lot about our uh, relations between our spinal health in the neck, especially, and our airway. If people see our spot for health uh, show on, uh, on through the media system, yeah, on Kason, yeah. they'll be able to get more information on that. But 
Um, just the correlation between them. And if one doesn't, if the neck is not right, the airway is not uh, right as well. And then again, we have all these uh, issues that come up as an adult. So having kids checked for it is the vital information here because right. you're setting them up for success. So if you have issues, if you've noticed your kids having issues with breathing or sleeping even, or they're waking up really tired, that's how people find my office is waking up. The kids are tired. They have these like, you know, swollen, yeah. um, what do you call it? Under, under your eyes. eye, under yeah. eyes. Yeah. And that's not supposed to be ha happening for kids. You know, when I grew up, it was like, you play really hard, you study some, and then you sleep <laughs> and then you wake up refreshed and keep doing that again. Um, so, um, so it was good to have you and, uh, I hope we get to do more of these. We will get to do more of these and we learned little by little on how to optimize our health. Uh, you know, one good breath at a time <laughs> and it takes more than one practitioner you need a little team to make sure that everything is working right so yeah it's been it's been a pleasure <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll see you on the next uh, next time hopefully next week with another topic bye all right bye